Okay, hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to today's online session. I hope everyone is in a good health and have adapting well under the new norm. I'm Michael Ng, Sales Director from Redtone in charge of Enterprise Sales and I'm your host for today. Today we have about 35 participants. What we are going to share today is how to secure your enterprise, protect your data against next generation threats. Uh, first, let me begin with a pool question for you all. Uh, can you launch the pool? Okay. Uh, have you experienced any cyber attack in the past three months? So you can give your answers. Uh, I will give you about 15 seconds before we move on. Okay. Before we start, uh, I want to go through the housekeeping items. Uh, let us move to the next slide. Now, here we go. Today we have a small group of audience. Uh, our intention is to make this online dialogue session interactive rather than one-way presentation. During this presentation, all participants will be on listening mode and your mic will be mute. However, you are welcome to ask questions in the Q&A panel. This session will take about an hour. During the Q&A session, if you have any questions, please click on raise hand button and we will enable the speaking mode for you. The raise hand button is at the bottom of the screen. Can I see some hand? Uh, can you all try it? Okay, great. Without further ado, let me introduce our presenter, Edwin Low. He is the head of business in LifeTech. He has years of experience in network and security industry. So let's begin the presentation. Over to you, Edwin, and you may take it from here. Uh, thanks, Michael, uh, and good morning, everyone. So uh, thank you for um, your time today. And uh, thank you, Red Tone, for allowing me to uh, speak in your uh, live webinar. As, um, yeah, as partners of uh, Red Tone, we, you know, we thought it'd be good to share some of the um, uh, intelligence as well as the, uh, the things that we've learned over the last, um, the last few weeks, uh, especially during this, uh, this time where we are all working in a new environment and uh, you know, experiencing new kinds of things. So um, I thought it'd be a good way to actually share some of the things which our SOC, our security operations has, um, has learned. And of course, uh, we, will, we will have a discussion on, um, you know, a further discussion later, questions and uh, answers for anything that you might want to know more. Um, from my side, I also have um, our uh, senior security manager, Firus, who will also be um, you know, assisting to answer any uh, questions regarding uh, cyber security, cyber threats, um, yeah, exit plans, uh, strategies. So I will go ahead and presentation. All right, so everyone can see my screen. So today we will be talking about, uh, I've separated this presentation into four different sections. Okay, firstly, we'll be talking about the evolving threat landscape. Okay, what's going on in our environment today? And, um, you know, what are some of the, uh, sorry. 
uh, uh, the, I think the slide is not on yet. Just give me a sec. Okay, cool. Okay, good. All right, good. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, we'll be separating the slides into four different sections. Okay, I'll be talking a bit about the threat landscape. I think most of you might already know what is going on in the market, but I just want to have you know some quick updates, um, what our SOC has been uh, monitoring. Then, of course, the, the trends, I think that will be something which uh, most of you will be interested in. Okay, what's happening the last few months uh, and the last year uh, in the industry. Uh, I'll talk a bit about COVID-19, uh, what are the threats that we've seen and you know, what are the, the types of uh, things that we can do to actually protect our organizations against these threats. And uh, finally, as we are moving into CMCO you know, and away from uh, you know, MCO, we need to start talking about our exit strategy. You know, how can we uh, move forward with our business and still ensure uh, that our organization or our company is uh, well protected against the, the new kind of threats which have emerged uh, through this uh, whole COVID-19 saga. Then um, finally, we'll be talking a bit about the uh, developing a, a strategy and uh, how you know red tone can actually help uh, help you with that strategy okay so yeah I'll just share some of the the major headlines over the last five years I think um, we, we all know that uh, data leaks and uh, major hacks have been happening um, across the globe and it's not something new. Okay, we, we see uh, across industries, some of the uh, local and global um, industries have been hit by uh, million dollar hacks, okay, large scale hacks. And this is um, increasing at a tremendous rate. Okay, we, we've seen this, um, this data is from, uh, uh, through IBM. And we can see that from 2012, uh, we, we did declare that the year of the security breach. Okay, this is where we see security breaches start to escalate. And uh, over the years until today, we can see more than, uh, you know, a billion records have already been uh, leaked out. And we see, you know, no sign of change uh, in this trend. Okay, threat detection, we, it takes you know an average organization about 214 days to uh, even identify the root cause of the breach you know they don't even know that the breach has been inside until um, it's too late and to even contain this a further 77 days so that's almost one whole year just to solve a security incident and uh, as you can see that the cost there is in, in USD on uh, it's a global average uh, one, one million US dollars. So uh, the whole cost of this security breach can be very expensive. Uh, just some further statis statistics. So uh, we can see here the average cost of a stolen record on the black market is about 148 uh, US dollars. And um, so our team does monitor the dark web uh, for customers and we do see uh, lots of credit card information. We do see lots of uh, stolen credentials and uh, this price does uh, maintain true. Uh, even though this, this was done in 2018, this, this cost does remain true until today. We do see that uh, even in Malaysia uh, of records, uh, you know, being leaked onto the dark web and being sold for these prices. And um, yeah, the, the most alarming thing is not that this 48% um, you know, of attacks come through malicious uh, means, but in fact, the 27%, which is the human error, okay, uh, that is still very prevalent in 
most of the organizations um, across the region in, uh, in Asia as well as uh, globally. We are seeing um, lots of insider threats. Okay, we still consider them insider threats, but it can be, uh, you know, a staff which is, you know, not aware of, you know, cybersecurity or not aware of certain uh, best practices that they can do to actually prevent uh, their, you know, information from being compromised. So that is uh, something which is alarming and so prevalent today. So today's market, there, there are many drivers and um, it, it has changed very drastically. There are new drivers which are, you know, informing business decisions. And uh, of course, they're pressuring both uh, IT as well as OT, you know, organizations were, were seeing a lot of uh, IoT devices coming into play. And uh, of course, these drivers have uh, risk implications, you know, as well as implications to customers' bottom line. So we see a uh, convergence of uh, IT and OT. Okay, we're seeing uh, you know, resilience and uh, uptime. Okay, uh, safety, so failure of uh, cyber physical systems. Okay, we've seen uh, many attacks, uh, you know, across the globe targeting physical damage. So we've seen uh, nuclear plants being damaged, dams being uh, uh, exploded, so on and so forth. So these are some examples of actual cyber attacks which have happened and caused physical damage. Uh, corporate espionage, state-sponsored attacks are still very prevalent. Okay, from China, from Russia, from the US. Uh, reputation risk, so um, we're seeing a lot of degradation of company reputation due to data loss, you know, systems shutdowns, and of course, uh, phishing attacks, okay, uh, especially if you're customer facing, we see a lot of uh, phishing attacks happening, and the, the way that these uh, attacks happen have also changed, you know, the way uh, later, I will share some of the the, the phishing uh, websites that we actually monitored during this COVID-19 uh, saga. And of course, uh, national security responsibility. Okay, so adhering to the, uh, the standards and the best practices. All right, so moving on to the, to the trends. So uh, these are the trends which we have seen uh, for the last year and a half, okay, 2019 uh, until uh, Jan February of this year. Uh, there has been some movement okay, from, our, from our monitoring. Uh, financial services still maintain as the, the top targeted industry. However, very interestingly is the movement of retail. You know, they've actually moved up over the years uh, going from fourth place to second place, and uh, why? Why is it that retail has actually moved, uh, you know, up a notch? Because we are seeing retail moving into uh, e-commerce. We are seeing retail uh, utilize new kinds of technologies, which has opened them up to uh, new kinds of attacks. And these attacks are what hackers have been using to exploit uh, the retail industry. Okay, um, yeah, and just uh, also interesting to note that uh, healthcare and uh, energy were, were a bit on the low here last year, but we do see that healthcare in the last couple of months have been heavily targeted because of COVID-19. So I do see this table uh, changing uh, next year. Okay, healthcare will most probably move up. Uh, government as well as education will probably also move up as these industries have moved into more uh, you know, electronic ways of uh, you know, providing their, their, their business or their, 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 uh, their usual operations. Okay, so uh, just some of the global security news, uh, latest ones. We have seen a 2,000% increase in operational technology in 2019, as mentioned earlier. Uh, there is rising interest of attacks in the industrial systems, especially because uh, of how IT and OT have started to merge and, you know, customers, uh, organizations are looking at, uh, you know, adding in 
IOTs adding in new kinds of smart technology into their uh, OT systems, which has led to a lot of vulnerabilities as well as uh, potential exploits for the hackers, for these guys to actually uh, come in and uh, perform their, their malicious attacks. It, uh, last year, over 8.5 billion records were compromised. So that's a huge number. As mentioned, we've seen a 200% increase you know, over the numbers from 2018, which is, um, yeah, it is very interesting and very scary to, to know. And uh, we do see threat actors actually returning to uh, ransomware, you know, this has uh, been prevalent across 12 different countries in the region, um, you know, and across the continents as well. And uh, it has been prevalent across industries. So we do see ransomware to, uh, to go up this year as well. Uh, vectors of attacks. Phishing is still the number one vector of attack. Okay, it is... Uh, the most frequently used type of attack and the most easiest for, for hackers to actually uh, compromise an organization. Okay, but interestingly, um, this is actually down from 2018 where phishing attacks was almost 50% of this graph. So uh, that's just interesting to note. And uh, notable increase was the scan and exploit. So attackers have been increasingly uh, scanning target environments for vulnerabilities uh, to exploit and they uh, we have found you know this technique to be used in about yeah thirty percent of um, you know incidences and this is up uh, from the previous year about ten percent uh, unauthorized use of credentials so um, most of the time this is linked to phishing. Uh, attacks. So once the credentials have been stolen through phishing, that is where uh, attackers can actually use these credentials for unauthorized usage. Okay, then of course, uh, mobile device compromise, we may see this increase this year uh, as we have increased the use of, uh, you know, work from home, uh, mobile devices, you know, BYOD. Malware types, we see uh, 46% are still uh, backdoor type of attacks, uh, backdoor type of malwares. Uh, basically, we allow attackers to establish control okay, over a victim host. And let's mention a lot of this coming through phishing attacks. Okay, I wanted to discuss a bit more on cloud security. So this is a huge trend which um, our SOC has been uh, monitoring over the last one and a half to two years. Okay, uh, Many organizations are going on a cloud journey. So they are migrating a lot of their assets into the cloud. They're subscribing to Amazon, they're subscribing to uh, Alibaba, Azure, uh, or even private clouds and this is this is really the the future and of course now uh, during during this time where working from home was prevalent uh, you know many new customers or uh, organizations have moved into cloud to try and support their business and it comes to no surprise as uh, you know organizations have actually uh, struggled okay to 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 understand uh you know and balance their needs for you know integration as well as uh, best practices when it comes to to cloud uh you know a lot of misunderstandings especially from the cloud service providers where maybe from organizations expectation is to secure um you know to provide that kind of security in supporting uh the underlying hardware the softwares uh, whatever the customers are hosting, uh, or even even the the configurations, and a lot of these. Um, also, we we talk about in-house security teams, uh, perhaps not being able to adapt to you know 
the, the new era of cloud and because of the high volume of alerts, it may also lead to um, you know, potential malicious activities slipping off the radar, uh, sometimes maybe not even uh, monitoring that data on a you know, continuous basis. And that is because of the, the yeah, one, the lack of security teams and the, adap the adaptation into cloud, which has been uh, you know, a, a new challenge for many organizations. Uh, type of data that we do see in the cloud, uh, most, the highest of course, email. I think many of us are on uh, Microsoft 365, you know, Outlook or uh, Gmail, Google. And this is where uh, a lot of the, the risk comes into play. And as you can see, uh, according to Gartner, uh, there is a projected increase, you know, from 38 billion in 2019 to 49.1 billion. So people are moving a lot of their data uh, into cloud and we do see an increase of data breaches um, due to misconfigured assets in the cloud. Okay, a lot of the, um, the, the data that has been leaked out through cloud is because of misconfigurations and this is uh, a trend that we have been seeing. Okay, some of the, the, the top threats in the cloud, unauthorized access, uh, insecure interfaces, APIs to you know, other, uh, other third party sites, other third party softwares, uh, and mention 40% uh, misconfiguration of cloud platform, wrong setups. Okay, this is uh, something where organizations have uh, perhaps a, a wrong, um, wrong understanding or wrong expectation of the cloud providers. And they, uh, we have seen a lot of them believe that the cloud providers will give them an end-to-end uh, security uh, services, you know, security monitoring, uh, protection of their environment, uh, you know, the configuration. But uh, this is something which organizations need to really look at, um, especially now uh, even more. All right. So those are some of the big trends. Uh, 2019, we do see uh, that going to go further into 2020. I'll be moving on now into the threats that we saw uh, during this COVID-19 uh, saga. So the last two months, as you know, uh, many of the challenges that were faced uh, during this, you know, work from home phase was, yeah, using personal devices. I think that was the, the, the biggest uh, issue for many organizations across the globe, uh, not only in Malaysia, uh, you know, for, for email, for handling sensitive information. How, how do you handle that? So I think that was the number one question. Um, even for security firms uh, like ourselves, who, you know, how do we, um, how do we ensure that um, sensitive information is is uh, protected, and uh, especially in home networks where now we work from home, uh, a lot of the controls are now not in place. Okay, so uh, which brings me to the second point, which is um, the support of working from home okay how do we provision the corporate access to support remote working arrangements so that was one of the uh the big ones which many uh, organizations struggled with uh, one of my uh, customers they were sharing with me that they had to uh, do an emergency purchase of almost a thousand laptops um, because and, and almost 50 servers just because their existing infrastructure could not support um, a work from home environment. They, they were not prepared for that. And uh, finally, uh, proper deployment and configuration of the remote services, so like VPNs, two-factor authentication. So I think these were some of the, um, the things which organizations struggled with. So uh, some of the threats that we actually saw were that uh, organizations were not 
able to effectively detect cyber threats. Okay, security teams were short staffed and uh, repurposed for other activities. So a lot of security alerts were left uh, unmonitored or uninvestigated. Uh, and they also struggled with detection and uh, taking of action. So importantly was the, the taking of action for the security incidences. So um, we can't stop all security incidences from happening, but uh, for us to actually minimize the damage is to take action and a lot of organizations could not do that. And of course, uh, they could not effectively respond and recover from these attacks. Okay, as you know, many employees, they, they may not have the, the facilities or the availability to, to support these kind of efforts. Uh, security controls, okay, were, were not applied into the new systems or, or tools were maybe just too quickly implemented. Um, so that we, there, there were no best practices that were put into place uh, to ensure that you know, the assurance was there when performing their regular activities. Um, existing processes and uh, maybe even good practices were sidestepped or you know, just thrown out the door once uh, they went in and worked from home. Uh, employees we saw were more susceptible to social engineering attacks, phishing attacks, very prevalent. And the reliance on remote access systems made uh, organizations uh, across the region more vulnerable to uh, DDoS attacks. Okay, especially, you know, people are working from home, the, the infrastructure to support that uh, might not be sufficient. Uh, many vulnerabilities were uh, also introduced as, uh, you know, maybe patching was neglected or new kinds of shadow IT perhaps were also introduced into environments. Um, insider threats also increased. Okay, as, um, you know, we see perhaps some of the disgruntled employees, perhaps they, they had a pay cut or they, they were fired and they, you know, they wanted to, to give back something to, to their former employees. And uh, that we did see that as a potential threat during this time. Uh, on top of the, uh, the, the potential exploits in the personal devices. Okay, so some of the phishing sites, okay, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, phishing attacks. We've seen a lot of, um, you know, different kind of methods which uh, attackers or threat actors were using to to compromise information or, um, you know, they were utilizing this COVID-19 situation to uh, take things to their advantage. So this was one of the phishing sites which we were actually monitoring uh, was a almost exact carbon copy of the World Health Organization website. And they were actually collecting uh, phone numbers, emails, and passwords. Um, I believe some of them were being sold on the dark web. This, this site has already been taken down. Okay, this is a, a, a Canadian website, okay, uh, where similar to when we want to transfer money. So, uh, it actually would send them to this page when they, they wanted to transfer money. It came through an email and instead of sending it to the bank, obviously was sending it to, you know, some other, uh, one of the hackers accounts. And, uh, something which we saw very, very, um, increasingly over the last weeks were, uh, health related websites. So as you can see, very professional looking, um, but these websites were in fact uh, phishing websites, you know, collecting user information and leveraging on the COVID-19 uh, threats that were out there. Uh, of course, people are looking for face masks, people are increasingly looking for uh, you know, hand sanitizer, uh, yeah, disinfectants, whatever it is, and they are utilizing that to take uh, advantage of that situation. It's another example of the uh, health related uh, phishing website, okay, collecting emails and passwords. 
and some of the uh, phishing emails that we saw. So this one is talking about uh, payment. Okay, very commonly is uh, phishing emails will uh, either pretend to be uh, one of the uh, distributors or suppliers and requesting for payment. And they did take advantage of this by utilizing again the, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 situation to expedite their payments. Okay, same with this one. All right, so moving on, just want to touch a bit on, you know, how we help our customers to uh, protect themselves against these new threats. Okay, the new threats, which we just talked about. Um, one of them, uh, of course, we, we are providing 24 by 7 uh, monitoring, you know, monitoring the, the threat patterns and uh, we were able to, you know, uh, help them implement a, you know, best practice, you know, when working from home. And we were able to monitor that as well, you know, monitor for shadow IT, monitor for uh, user behaviors uh, that were not normal uh, in, their, in their environment. Okay, uh, I'll share these slides uh, later, so I won't go through every point, uh, but you can have a read through it. We, uh, of course, the continuity of critical security functions, uh, which was very important during this time. Um, so identifying and monitoring critical security activities, uh, uh, you know, confirming patching processes were functioning, you know, especially for for vulnerabilities on, uh, on endpoints. So this is something which we will continuously monitoring uh, for our clients to ensure that, you know, that uh, they were well protected against these new uh, threats. And of course, uh, incident response plans. So that is something which, uh, which did change when uh, the workforce did move to, uh, to their homes for work. And uh, we did help them to adapt this uh, incident response plans on, um, you know, what employees can do or what their security team can do uh, if they experience a, you know, an, an attack, you know, from their home, from their home networks. Uh, counter opportunistic threats taking advantage of the pandemic. So earlier you saw some of the threats taking advantage, like the the, the fake masks or the uh, the hand sanitizer websites and basically this is all about um, user enablement okay enabling your users on you know what's going on what are the threats that they might receive um, you know making them understand you know what a uh, how to work from home securely and how they should actually enforce that so uh, basically creating a single source of th truth for your organization in uh, relation to, you know, the COVID-19 exercises, uh, advice, sorry, in, you know. So this will help to limit the likelihood of, you know, the users you know, clicking on potential uh, links or emails. Um, and yeah, awareness, awareness, awareness. That was so important, especially, um, you know, not even, during COVID-19, but in general, uh, awareness is very important for the user base. And uh, yeah, just providing very specific guidance to employees to be extra vigilant, you know, when uh, requests for personal information or financial information. So these are very much best practices that users can take, uh, they, they can take into account. Uh, even internally, you know, what are some of the uh, the precautions that they can take if you know a someone internally asks for this kind of information. Okay, just a checklist. Uh, this one you can share with uh, your users. You know, very very basic, very simple, but just a reminder, of course, you know, to back up files, you know, strength, strengthen home networks, okay, use strong passwords, okay, no ABC one, two, threes. Um, yeah, manage social media profiles. So this is this is a key one. You know, uh, we we often overlook our social media. Um, sometimes we go about our day and we don't realize that the the amount of links or the amount of um, you know even videos that are circulating 
that can actually lead us to getting our social media uh, compromised, you know, or even the privacy and security settings on the social media. Uh, we need to be aware of what sharing. We, we, we see a lot of uh, users, you know, they post things on their social media and it's actually all public, you know, but they're actually sharing proprietary information. And of course, finally, avoid opening and uh, delete suspicious emails or attachments. If you're not sure, just, yeah, don't open it. Ask your IT manager, ask the uh, security manager, or ask your, your managed security service provider for, for assistance. Okay, so I just want to finish off uh, with the exit strategy. Okay, we, we are starting to have conversations with uh, organizations, with companies on how we can actually adapt or move forward as we exit this, uh, this whole COVID-19 uh, situation. Okay, so one of the, the main points, of course, is the, the technologies that we have already implemented uh, to work from home, okay? Um, and now have become very much relied on by the workforce. Uh, we need to ensure that these tools, if we are going to maintain it, has the same security standards, you know, as any other IT tools or any other, um, you know, softwares that we have put into place in our regular uh, offices, you know, our regular organizations. Okay. Um, also, the... Uh, in the short to medium term, we need to understand the, the changes in the, the behavior, okay, the, the culture of organizations uh, moving forward, you know, how, how you're gonna approach that and that will actually likely um, give a lasting implication. And um, you know, how, especially earlier I mentioned, let's say shifting applications into cloud, we need to understand what is our strategy on that uh, before we can, you know, really implement that properly. Uh, rogue devices, okay, do run a scan of your uh, network to identify new unknown devices. There's gonna be a lot of new devices coming in or even coming, uh, you know, maybe they were already there, maybe they're coming in, uh, but it's good to run a scan. Uh, home laptops, okay, do make sure if anyone is bringing back their home laptops, uh, into corporate environments to, yeah, either do a scan or just not bring them at all. We, we don't know what kind of um, you know, malicious software or what kind of backdoors might be in these home laptops. Uh, USBs, uh, NAS devices, okay, uh, and force device controls, okay, to block non-authorized USBs or other peripheral devices, okay. So, we just want to make sure that any devices that now are coming from the home and back into our office environment are actually safe to use, uh, especially because they, they have posed a very huge security risk as they were out of our view. You know, they were not being monitored. They were not, uh, perhaps not even uh, having this proper uh, security protocols in place. Uh, and that is a very big risk. And also uh, another thing to add also is the, the inventory. So just keep, keep some, uh, keep tabs on the inventory, okay, what, what came in and what came out. So just to ensure that, um, yeah, employees are returning the, the, the equipment, you know, that they have maybe borrowed or maybe staff have taken things back. Uh, so just an extra note to think about. Uh, ensure, Unsecure software are off your network. Secure network are off your network. Okay, so uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of new softwares in place. Um, there were a lot of new vulnerabilities that that came about um, on yeah work from home softwares. Okay, there were there, there was huge news on you know uh, even Zoom. Okay, we are using Zoom, but the, the vulnerabilities have already been patched. Uh, but that is something to, to think about um, when moving back into an office environment. So update, get, get uh, the users to update their OS, update their software, make sure that the software is patched, uh, 
if you can protect the endpoints, okay, and sure, if you don't have an EDR solution, uh, do talk to us, we can help you with that. Uh, but ensure that these endpoints that are coming back in already have an up-to-date um, EDR solution, you know, endpoint detection and response. Um, and of course, a continuous security monitoring. Uh, I'm sure your security teams have been working around the clock to ensure that uh, environments okay, for malicious behaviors or you know, new vulnerabilities uh, were not coming into your environment. So it's, it's good to keep doing that even now that we're back in the you know, uh, so-called uh, you know, familiar environment. Uh, but as mentioned, a lot of the risk, new risks has been introduced. So uh, it's good to have that security monitoring uh, on top of that. Um, of course, 24 seven would be good. And uh, preparing security processes and procedures. Okay, password resets. Okay, ensure your employees are um, aware of company password policies. If you don't have one, you should have one in place. Uh, ensure compliance is in place as well. Uh, employee onboarding. Okay, I, um, I'm sure there, there, there were organizations that did have new hires. Um, so just keep that in mind to, to make sure that they understand the processes and procedures. And um, yeah, just maintain readiness for another round of, uh, you know, perhaps working from home. So um, we, can, we can basically fine tune some of the mistakes uh, from the lessons that we've learned, fine tune our, our action plans. And that's something that uh, we can also help, help our customers with. Uh, yeah, so we can help help you to develop a security strategy. Okay, understand your baseline, the baseline of your current security state and um, help you to build that across the board on different areas. Um, yeah, and of course, we do have uh, many different services that we can help across the board, uh, you know, from security strategy to uh, security intelligence operation, you know, managing your, your SOC, uh, managing your SIEMs uh, to give you a full end-to-end -end visibility of your environment. So that will actually help to, uh, to prepare yourself for a future possible, you know, work from home situation or a future pandemic situation. Uh, and finally, of course, our, uh, our SOC, sorry. Yeah, our SOC is in place to, to give that holistic view. Um, yeah, we have a cognitive stock, the first in, in Asia, the only one in Asia as well. Uh, and that can give you that, um, that security and that assurance that your environment is protected from these new threats that come about, whether it be from cloud, whether it be from uh, you know, uh, threats taking advantage of uh, pandemic situations. We can monitor for the user behavior analysis by the incident response, uh, forensic analysis, uh, and will give you the security reports, okay, the advisories, um, how to solve those problems. Okay, these are actionable reports, actionable reports that uh, you'll be able to use to, and our team will be able to assist you to actually prevent against these kind of attacks. Um, you'll be able to know the, the latest information from the threat intelligence. So some of the information we have uh, on these slides, you'll have, uh, we can provide more, we can provide something a bit more detailed. Um, if you wanna know uh, what is related to your industry. And of course we, we have uh, powerful tools that can give you end-to-end you know, uh, -end security landscape visibility, uh, security automation, um, orchestration. So we can orchestrate uh, instant response in, in record times, you know, faster uh, to minimize the, the potential damage that might be inflicted by these kind of threats. Okay, so just our, our difference. Okay, what, what we can actually provide to you, uh, we can help our customers maintain high availability, you know, give that deep analytics, detection, response in rapid times. And uh, yeah, we can give that world-class capabilities uh, to map out and visualize cyber attacks and give you that centralized uh, management um, especially, uh, yeah, with 
the new kind of threats that we will be continually facing in the, the next, you know, five, 10 to 20 years. All right, so uh, that's all that I have to share. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I'll uh, end this time back to Michael. Thank you, Evan, for such an insightful sharing. Uh, now, let's see if we have any questions from the audience. Okay. Any question from the audience? Uh, yes. Let Let begin the Q and A session. Uh, Evan, thank you for the good presentation. Um, if you have any question, please write down uh, at the Q and Q and A column, and we will get our panelists to answer the question. There are a few questions from our audience. Um, the first question, as we. As we know, the new COVID-19 virus is actually spread it out. How our system, your system could determine that is the COVID-19 virus trying to attack to our system, to your system. Will you please show us the trade as for example? So, um, Edwin, would you like to answer this question? Yeah, so, um, it's a good question. Okay, um, definitely the, the threats okay, or the malwares or viruses are very widespread. Okay, we are seeing many threat actors or many APT groups utilizing um, yeah, the COVID-19 virus. And there are different methods that we have seen them actually try to compromise an account, attack your system. And I don't have any live demo right now to, to show you you know, these threats, uh, but we can definitely have a, you know, further discussion on how we can actually uh, see these threats. So one of the ways is, of course, identifying the behavior, okay? Uh, we are able to monitor behaviors in uh, an organization's or a system's environment by, by we taking the logs, okay? we take security logs, we take security events, uh, we correlate all these events and we, uh, we try to understand these uh, these events or this metadata. Okay, when we understand this metadata, it actually comes up into actionable uh, alerts, okay, which our security analysts can take action to um, you know, either perform that incident response, okay, or perform that, uh, that remediation, whether it to be, uh, yeah, isolating a, a compromised laptop. Okay, so one of the the use case that we had was uh, one of the users from our customers clicked on a okay a COVID nineteen phishing link. Okay, they got an email, and this email basically was uh, yeah similar to the one that I showed was requesting for some kind of payment, um, and there was a PDF. So when we opened the PDF, uh, the PDF did contain some uh, ransomware, and um, the good thing about this customers that we already had uh, embedded our security automation tools. So once this uh, ransomware propagated in the, uh, in the endpoint, uh, our tools were able to identify that, that malicious pattern, okay, that um, now the, the endpoint was being compromised and we we're able to isolate that. We isolated that endpoint uh, automatically, which actually led to uh, one, the, we were able to identify the root cause, okay, it was through a, a phishing email. Uh, two, the, the ransomware or the, the malware did not actually spread into the environment. It, it was actually contained within that, uh, that specific endpoint. So that is just uh, one example of, of how we were able to, to stop these kind of threats. But uh, if you would like to, yeah, to, to see that no more, we can definitely arrange a, a separate demo session uh, for that. Okay. Um, let's proceed with the second question. Um, the question from the audience, phishing site, any example in Malaysia, Malaysian banking? Um, probably I pass it to Farus. 
Baru stay. Hi, uh, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, all right. So, um, we do have uh, from one of our services where we monitor all these uh, websites uh, for banks. We do have a few banks under us that we provided the service. Um, there are a lot of uh, all these phishing websites, especially when the banks are offering online services uh, like uh, Maybank to you, CMB Clicks, uh, or your or even something like e-wallet, we have seen uh, the rise of it. Um, basically, all these websites, um, what they do, they just, uh, see, uh, because the way how websites work, they can just copy the source code of the website and then uh, host it uh, somewhere else and then embedded the link uh, through some phishing emails or uh, through some many in the middle attacks where they inserted the links and then promote so-called promote the phishing websites where gullible users usually get this website see oh this looks like normal and then even even some even some uh, some detection uh, software could not detect that this is a fake website because of the way how uh, they transfer or reroute the traffic. And then, uh, then the normal thing happened where you enter your username and password, then they will simply pop out the password is wrong, but actually it's not. Uh, so this happens quite normal. It, in, even in Malaysia, there's, there's a number of cases that we monitor almost monthly for our customers. Uh, especially those uh, popular banks. Um, uh, unfortunately, of course, due to uh, certain restrictions, I cannot share you the links or the images of this uh, phishing website. Uh, but they do, but they are prevalent in Malaysia, uh, especially now uh, for the past couple of months where people are relying on online banking more especially due to the MCO and such. Uh, not to say that previously we don't see the upward trends, but the, the trend for online shopping, uh, online purchasing for the last two months have been so high. Uh, certain websites already uh, experienced slowness uh, due to the increased number of usage. So, uh, to be honest, it is the right time for uh, phishing websites to appear, especially for banking, uh, not just banks, but also other uh, e-wallet services, uh, uh, some uh, remittance uh, services as well, uh, those online uh, online forex thing as well. They are, so there are lots of these uh, currently right now. Okay, um, next question. My client base are all small and mid-sized company. What you have shared are suitable for the second 2% of company in Malaysia. Budget-wise, how? Um, what's, uh, Evan, what is your opinion for this question? Um, yes, so uh, in terms of the, the services, we believe that uh, cybersecurity should be for everybody. It is not exclusive for the, yeah, uh, just the, the top, the top conglomerates or the, the, the multinationals. Um, small and mid-sized companies are one of the most um, regularly hit industries. Okay, like the, the local uh, manufacturers, the, the local retail stores. Uh, we do see a lot of uh, attacks in those areas. And uh, we do currently have customers in those areas as well. So uh, in terms of uh, giving a uh, affordable as well as a so-called holistic security service, uh, that is something which we are already doing and we can, we can have a further discussion on how to provide that uh, to, yeah, to, your, to your client base. Okay. Uh, let's see, there, there are a few more questions coming in. Uh, 
Um, the next question, what, what's the difference between the Redtoon hosting versus Azure, AWS, and some local data hosting giant? So um, for this question, I'll, I will pass it to uh, Jok Seong. Jok Seong there? Hello. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on on the, on this question, uh, Redtoon, I think uh, we also offer some uh, hosting services. Uh, I think what our differences, our hosting services, because it's based in Malaysia, and of course for those company having concern of compliant concern of the data being hosted in the overseas like Azure, AWS kind of thing because the content you don't know where. And for those compliances, of course, they can easily uh, work with Redtone where we provide our local hosting for our customers. And on top of that, our hosting are well connected to Malaysia Internet Exchange. So of course, that also allow you to give you the lower latencies of access of data because the, the, the data all flow within the local environment. Hope that you we were able to answer some of the questions. If there are any more uh, doubts or any more questions, feel free to contact our uh, our account manager. We can we are very willing to even provide more inf information on that. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Feel Thank free you. if you yeah. have any question, can can always check with uh, our account man manager anytime. Okay. The next question is: uh, How would you like to see AI leverage as a security tools? to drive greater cyber resiliency. Um, I will pass it to Evan, this question. Yeah, uh, that, that's a great question actually. And um, yeah, we, we are seeing a lot of attacks being, uh, becoming more advanced. Okay, um, traditional tools, uh, you know, our signature based tools are, are not enough. Okay, as Farouz mentioned earlier, we. Uh, they, they can't detect some of these new advanced uh, attacks. And uh, in fact, uh, here at uh, our SOC, we already implemented uh, you know, security automation and security artificial intelligence uh, into an operation. So we think of uh, artificial intelligence as having components like machine learning, you know, automation. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a broad concept, but the key variable is that the technologies that we have and the automation uh, that we have allows our uh, you know security analyst uh, analysts to be smarter okay to be more deliberate to have better information uh, to have more actionable intelligence so that they can um, act in ways that are more effective for uh, the, the customers for the organization so that that is where uh, AI can really come into the picture it can help to reduce false positives and false negatives okay and, um, you know all those good things can happen when when uh, you have the analysts or the people working with uh, you know enabling technologies like like AI and uh, we find that organizations that are you know utilizing this to the you know uh, to, that are truly resilient okay when we talk about cyber re resiliency is um, you know the, ab the ability to to, to maintain okay its core purpose you know during a cyber attack so um, we we find that organizations that use AI to their advantage can enjoy uh, fewer data breaches okay fewer uh, cyber exploits um, that infiltrate their system and um, yeah the the bad things are going to happen no matter what okay there's always going to be cyber attacks but basically it's taking advantage of uh, AI tools. Okay, pair that with uh, with people. Okay, with the, the expertise, your your security people, your managed security service team, uh, you know, or or partners like like Red Tone or or Life Tech or you know whoever it is, IBM, and um, that that can give uh, you know a bigger and better cyber resiliency to the organization uh, across the board. All right. Okay. Um, we have one technical question. What are some of the indications it is a phishing banking site? Um, what is your opinion, Farus? Okay, so basically an indication, uh, the simplest way for uh, layman, layman people, layman person to identify whether 
are they in the correct uh, website or not? It's just simple. Uh, um, every bank in Malaysia are required to have their identifier or their SSL certificates online, right? So basically, uh, for layman person, you can just check your URL bar uh, for uh, some uh, indication. Uh, you see, there's a lock icon next to the url where you can check whether the website is truly the correct website or not number one number two uh, usually banks will have a very updated uh, contents on their website right if you if you reach uh, especially for those who are using online banking a lot right um, when you enter the, the website you you probably can notice that the contents of the website, uh, whether it is updated, whether it is uh, outdated with, uh, you know, all these images and such, uh, look at look at the dates on those things, uh, especially if you're up to date with uh, current news and such, banks usually will have those um, live all the time. So you can, you can just see you feel and look on how these are uh, uh, presented on the website. Uh, next, uh, for let's say for uh, banks, they do banks do have their agents to market their products. Let's say for example, their personal loans, their commercial loans and such. Uh, and these agents are usually uh, posting their advertisements. Uh, randomly, some some use blogs, some use uh, social media, some use um, direct email. Even uh, make sure that whenever you are, uh, you know, whenever you are trying to uh, purchase or you are trying to view all these uh, products and services from a service provider like a bank or FSI, uh, make sure that. Uh, the the source is uh, the source is legitimate in, in the sense that uh, you can double check with the bank. Usually, banks uh, call centers will be able to help you. Uh, banks will never call you for uh, your personal information because they don't have because they they don't need to. They they already have your personal information when when you are already registered with the bank, so especially. You, Especially if you are, you have an account, they won't ask you about your credit card numbers and such because they already have it. Um, the the best way is for you to activate your uh, two factor authentication for your banking uh, needs and purposes because this is what happened a lot when people are trying to uh, perform all these tasks and then suddenly there's no confirmation from the banks that you, you have been doing all these activities. Uh, for, for an actual bank, whenever you do something, especially during a financial transaction, uh, they will require you to uh, verify all those actions through either OTP or now they have a secure app for you to verify. So all these things, if, if nothing else, there's this... Um, uh, <clears throat> I say the the rule number one of the internet, right? Uh, the rule number one of the internet. I will just uh, say that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, right? Uh, so just when when you see advertisements from banks, seemingly from banks, say uh, you can win a million or million ringgit, for example. Um, there are banks that do that, like BSN, for example, they have their SSPNI uh, program where you win one million a month. Uh, there are such programs, but just make sure before uh, you do participate, for example, because usually you, they will ask you to enter addresses, phone numbers, and such. Make sure that you know these uh, these things are legitimate. Okay, contact the banks. Uh, if you are unsure, always contact the banks uh, to ensure that uh, these things are uh, 
truly legitimate and not the fishing fishing site because uh, nowadays there are lots of types of phishing okay the emails there are video calls there are sms they even um, calls from seemingly uh, random numbers telling them their agents or telling them they are from banks you have uh, unauthorized transactions and such uh, it's simple banks will not uh, even if they say let's say your credit card which has been used uh, and so on the best way is you say okay you noted that uh, the issue you get information of the let's say transaction is where what is the transaction number and everything and the call yeah tell tell the caller that i will call the bank myself with all this info because uh, that's the best way for you to confirm that all these things are true right because if you call the bank that you're calling the call center and such they can help you uh, do not uh, entertain all these uh, uh, seemingly saying you have an unauthorized transaction or uh, you are the winner of some competition and such. Don't entertain that. Uh, banks will only communicate with you through uh, official letters. Uh, so they will not be uh, contacting you through uh, agents, agent calls and such. So these are some of the indicators where you can try to look at uh, to help you to avoid being scammed or fished uh, whenever you are dealing with all these banking items. All right. Thanks for Faros. Um, are there any more questions from our audience? Okay, I... All right. Um, I, if no, I will, I will hand over to the floor to Michael. Okay, uh, we are coming to the end of the session. Uh, to know more about many security services, you can contact our account manager and we can arrange for a one-to-one -one session with you. Today, we are giving out a free POC for your company to do a health check uh, in your network if there's any threats, cyber threats. If let's say you are interested, all you need to do is contact our account manager and we will get it arranged for you. Thank you for your time and I hope you guys enjoy today's session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.